For those of you who don't know, I am a trans channeler, and but anyway, um, when you are a trans channeler, it takes a little bit of courage, and okay, it takes a whole lot of courage to allow the being, the entity, the spiritual entity who wishes to speak through you to, to take over your body when you're in trance. Trans channeler means I am not here. My consciousness and my body is taken over. It's not taken over like taken. It's given. And it's a kind of a, a mutual symbiotic a sym symbiotic relationship. Um, there's a lot of trust. Um, and one of those that comes through me is Jesus. And I have been chastised for that. <laughs> oh well. Believe me, I questioned it myself in the beginning. But nevertheless, another one who comes through who has not come through for quite a while is an Egyptian. He's one of my spare guides. He says his name is Kanuth. Your guess is as good as mine how that's spelled. Another one that comes through from time to time is an American Indian, Cherokee, by the name of Charlie Bluefeather. And Charlie Bluefeather is an older man, and I don't know whether I consider him a spirit guide, but it's like he's always around me. He's a wise, wise elder. So, it is what it is. And I'm not sure if any one of them will choose to come through tonight, but if they do, they hopefully will identify themselves. Jesus usually does. Yasi was his nickname when he walked this world in physical form. And by the way, he's still walking this world in physical form, sort of. There have been so many magnificent teachers through the years so many revered master teachers. So many revered master teachers. So we were talking, I believe, about God and the universe and how to think about God in a different way. We have anthropomorphized God. We have created God in our image. And trust me, God came first and then we came. So uh, we were created in God's image and even that has been twisted. Meaning the spiritual that is God, the energy that is God, because God does not need arms, legs, gender, transportation, etc. The more that I put my trust over in this energy field that I know vibrates all around everything and through it and is a part of it and a part of me and I'm a part of that, then I start to understand the phrase that Jesus said and that was and it is in there, in black and white. Ye are gods. Oof, blasphemous. How dare a man come, you know, claim that he's a, 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 a god? Well, when you deny that, then you separate yourself from God. And that's where it starts. That's where it starts. Do you understand this? That's where it starts. You see, I'm starting to understand this oneness and this uniqueness. How can we all be so incredibly unique like a different snowflake? Because there are no two alike. At least they haven't found two alike yet. 
So how can we be like that and be so unique and, you know, each one of us just be so special and yet be one? Well, because and just because you're special doesn't mean you have to remain separate. That maybe my specialness and your specialness when vibrating in harmony creates more special for me and more special for you. Think upon this. Think upon this. And so sometimes your special may not vibrate with my special so well. And so that's when we have conflict. Conflict. So we say to this one says to this one, I am more special than you. And this one says to this one, no, I am more special than you. And this one says, you are wrong, and I am right. And this one says, I am right, and you are wrong. More conflict. More conflict. <sighs> Think upon this. Think upon this. And so it is okay when something rises up inside of you and you're around another and there's this feeling inside and you speak your truth, get it out and let it go. Do not hold on. When you hold on to something like the reins of a horse, you stop that horse in its track. And this is the truth. When you hold on to something that has irritated you, made you sad, made you mad, made you cry, made you feel less than, when you hold on to those things, you grab those reins and you stop your life right there. And then everything, everything that you see in your life is colored by these past experiences as you have stopped your life right there and not allowed yourself to grow. You're holding on to something that truly has no place here and now. So shouldn't every new experience in your life be thus? Should not it be thus that you look at that through the eyes of now? Now thinking, now believing, now understanding, now growing, now opening heart to your life. Oh, I'm here in this moment now. I am not going to experience this with that stuff. If you were in the 12th grade and ready to graduate, would you take what you learned in second and third grade with you and say, I will graduate with this because that is where I stopped. That's where I pulled the reins of the horse. When I was hurt, when I was disappointed, when I was abandoned. So that's where I'm stopping and I'm going to experience my 12th grade life through second and third grade eyes. We do this all the time. 